I will now begin with the primer on Syria, what is going on. And I went back and began with General, General Wesley Clark, wars were planned, seven countries in five years. And several years ago, this was the plan. And of course, Syria is one of the seven countries. It has not been, it's been more than five years, thank God. Uh, and hopefully it's done. Hopefully we as Americans can say no uh, and, and put this plan to rest once and for all. Here's a more recent article, General Wesley Clark, Seven Countries, Five Years. And this is, so this is updated a little bit. Uh, just, just basically the same information in another format. I, I wanted to, because I really want people to be able to understand and grasp these concepts, I have more than one article on a, a couple of the points. So just to be clear, after 9-11, a plan was put in place to basically gain control of the entire Middle East. And it was to go a plan to destabilize, attack, and restructure seven countries in the Middle East in five years. I won't even get into, you know, how immoral that is, what an outrageous plan it is. And this is, this is the background for Syria. Syria is one of the seven countries, and they are trying still to implement that plan on a, a, just a longer time scale. So that is a huge part of what is going on. People, evil people who love wars, military industrial complex, people who stand to benefit from turmoil and un unrest and upheaval have this plan that they want to implement. And Syria is next in their sights and they're going after Syria. So that's background, that's history. Now coming a little more into the present, how how did this happen? Uh, just just looking for the pattern so that we can understand what is going on. This article is from early in August, August second, two thousand thirteen. CIA was smuggling weapons to Syrian rebels during Benghazi embassy attack. If you, this primer is designed for people who don't spend a whole lot of time reading the news. This, this is included because if people talk about Benghazi, what happened in Benghazi, the people who were supposed to be guarding this place stood down and a bunch of people were killed and uh, it enraged the military to some extent because because they lost men and because they were told to stand down in a in a situation where it was not appropriate to stand down but this was arranged many believe and there's evidence to support to cover up the fact that the CIA was smuggling weapons to Syrian rebels now just a little background what's happening in Syria is a civil war. There is the established government that many people often refer to as Assad and then there are the rebels and the rebels have been stirring up contention and many people believe that the rebels are Al-Qaeda supplied and instigated by uh, the dark cabal through U.S. resources like the CIA, portions of the CIA. So the, the very reason, to some extent, it's entirely possible that the very reason there even is a civil war in Syria 
is because dark forces in, working through the U.S. have been instigating war. And right now, uh, people like Obama and those who support the cabal and our puppets and spokespeople for the cabal, they are trying to blame Assad, the current Syrian government, for all of the problems, when in reality the likelihood is very strong that it was actually dark forces from the U.S. Uh, working to foment rebellion, upheaval, and civil unrest leading to civil war. Russia releases key findings on chemical attack near Aleppo indicating similarity with rebel-made weapons. Now you can, if you do a search, you can find a lot of articles stating that Russia, you, I just found a, an article, I did, wanted to keep this brief so I didn't include it, but uh, there is a 100-page report that was completed by, by Russia uh, pretty much proving that the chemical attack was implemented by the Syrian rebels who are actually Al-Qaeda, who are actually supported by the U.S. CIA. So probably, you know, a lot of people, this is a primer, uh, if you have not been following some of these other things, the first time you heard about what was going on in Syria was the chemical attack. Well, they had video, they had photos, and, uh, you know, people uh, expressing deep emotion, sorrow about all these children who were killed in this chemical weapons attack. And how terrible Assad is because Assad... Uh, use these these chemical weapons. Well, as I've just been stating, it very likely was not Assad at all. And right, and you know, the, you probably heard that the United Nations sent a team to investigate to determine whether the chemical weapons were used by Assad or used by the rebels. And the evidence seems to be very strong that the chemical weapons were used by the rebels. But our government has, in the U.S. has become so accustomed to lying to people that they think if, you know, if they show us some pictures of injured children and they tell us who to blame, we will just go along and blame who they tell us to blame. And that is what really is changing now, what needs to change. No, we are now asking questions. What really happened in Benghazi? Where did the chemical weapons really come from? Who really are the Syrian rebels? How is Al-Qaeda involved? And how is the CIA involved? And we, you know, hey, we don't be fooled again, okay? So... That's kind of where we are, that the, the, the chemical weapons were used and the West you put their, kicked their mainstream media machine into high gear, trying to convince us that because of the chemical weapon attack, we all need to blow Syria off the map, essentially. I mean, they're not saying that. They're saying... Uh, Surgical missile strikes, whatever that means. And, you know, you hear phrases thrown around like boots on the ground. What that means is there's going to be guys there shooting people. That's what that means. That means people are going to die. And for what? So what, what is actually behind this? If, if we're being lied to by the media, what is it that is actually happening? Well... Max Kaiser, I think the man is a genius, making the world safe for banksters, Syria in the crosshairs. And he explains some of the ways that uh, the banksters will benefit from this war, some of the ways. There is talk also, and there's information out there about a pipeline uh, that that 
is set to go through Syria to bring natural gas from Qatar to Europe and Russia currently supplies Europe with natural gas and Russia wants to protect that interest in Syria and uh, that is one reason why Russia wants to protect the status quo. Also one reason why the Western powers want to uh, change that and, and I think that Western powers want to be able to get their natural gas from Qatar. Not to say that under capitalism they shouldn't, however, Russia seems to kind of be a voice of reason in the world right now. I know that is very surprising for a lot of Americans, but the BRICS nations seem to, of, of which Russia is a member, seem to genuinely want to bring peace and prosperity to more of the world than uh, the Western <laughs> dictators want. You know, I mean, this they've they've exploited Africa. They've exploited pretty much every area of the world where they've gained a foothold, and and they've allowed their home, some of their home countries like America and some of the European countries to do well, at least in the short term. But now, you know, the vice is tightening on us as Americans, and uh, it's time for us to become aware, along with the BRICS nations, of how the Western powers uh, really are planning not only to control the Middle East, but planning to completely control us and take away as much of our freedom as possible. So. You know, one of the possible outcomes, if you get these, these big superpowers involved on opposing sides, there's always potential for a world war. And when you have the potential for a world war, you have potential for nuclear attacks. Now, Russia warns of nuke disaster of Syria attack. This is not about nuclear bombs being dropped. This is about concerns pertaining to a nuclear reactor near Damascus and other nuclear facilities that could could pose a threat of radioactive contamination if attacked. Yeah, like we need more of that, right? Uh, with Fukushima bleeding radiation into the Pacific Ocean. So there, there is this this nuclear disaster possibility, but there's also, as I, as I said, when you have potential for a world war, the people involved have nuclear weapons and there is potential for the nuclear weapons to be used. And here is a statement from Putin pertaining to what the U.S. administration is saying about <laughs> what's going on in Syria. Putin Carrie's lies, pathetic. You know, it's it's kind of, for those of us who are in the baby boomer generation, it's a little humiliating after having lived through the Cold War to watch as Russia kind of emerges as a, a force for justice and sanity. But that's, that is what is happening. And uh, that's just the way it is. And so I, I hope that I've brought to the table some information that is helpful to people who need a primer on Syria. I realize it's it's not extremely simple because it's actually kind of a complex situation. But in this country, I think the things to watch are whether Obama will respect the Constitution and get congressional approval if he acts in Syria. And Hunter, this article from uh, Washington Times, Hunter, Obama inviting impeachment if he strikes Syria without Congress. And this article was from Tuesday of this week, September 3rd. It doesn't look at this moment as if as if he will get congressional support. Uh, this is an article 
from the daily costs and they are stating White House Oval Office speech on Syria attacks still under consideration and as I scroll down in the article there is a statement meanwhile the latest whip count from Think Progress shows 46 congressmen supporting an attack and 169 opposing it a drop in support from yesterday morning's tally which showed 47 in favor and 153 against. President Obama will be in St. Petersburg, Russia on Thursday and Friday for the G20 summit. So perhaps something will get worked out at the G20 summit. I find it interesting that the summit is in Russia. I think that it might behoove Obama and some of the people who go with him to go there humbly and perhaps willing to learn something instead of trying to tell people what's what. Uh, because he, he doesn't, at this time, he doesn't seem to have the support of the Congress to attack Syria. If he does so without congressional support, it's a clear breach of the Constitution and it is grounds for impeachment. So we will be watching that very closely. And this concludes the primer on Syria and as this is on YouTube if you have other links that you suggest to people I hope that you will place them in the comments section and uh, I, I was hoping to really give people a basic understanding in as short a period of time as possible so I hope I was able to accomplish that